I can't give you the exact numbers of the relative percentage of dogs that get cancer versus people, but it's pretty close. Morris Animal Foundation is right now funding almost 39 different studies in veterinary schools across the country and across the world looking at cancer in dogs specifically. She was diagnosed with spleen hemangiosarcoma. We know that the causes are multivariate, but they look like they're environmental, nutritional, and genetic. I mean, this little dog has been my nonprofit business partner for the last decade, my best friend, my roommate. Literally, I was sitting in, I was in shock, hysterically crying, couldn't even talk, realizing my whole life at that moment has changed. The dogs now live a lot longer. People take much better care of them than they did years ago. There's better food, there's better medication. So as dogs live longer and they get later and later in age, just as is the case with people who live a long time, there's a greater chance that they could have uh, genetic mutations in different cells, genetic damage that can lead to cancer. There was no definitive answer I could find about what to do for Lucky while this was happening. Each doctor or vet or holistic or homeopathic all had different ideas on how to help cure cancer. I would say we are now with dogs where we were with humans in 1970. It's still a terrible disease, it's, it's scary, we don't know all of our options, we don't really have places that we can go, and we have to make that easier. I really believe that this is such an important issue. I'm willing to be open on this whole journey to hopefully find the answers so that people in the future won't have to go through this. <laughs>